So what are we talking about? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I've been hacking travel related stuff all day and I've got to burn out, tell you the truth. <laughs> oh yeah. Visas, tickets, uh, schedules, money. <laughs> yeah, I don't uh, I don't do that stuff sucks. very well. Well, we have created a world now where security is the primary concern because of all the bad actors on the internet. And so everything you do yeah. is two-factor authentication, password, whatever, login, blah, blah, blah. And the culture is changing to this uh, safety obsessive uh, culture. Yeah. Uh, let's live forever. Let's live forever. And nobody hurt anybody. Mm. And uh, let's forget what the founding fathers did, where they had such strong beliefs they were willing to kill each other. Let's just forget all that. Yeah. You know? Inconvenient truth. It's all about safety now. Well, I'm just trying to get all this material stuff out of the way so I can get back mm. to my spiritual teaching gig, you know? Uh, last night I, I did a streaming thing and nobody showed up. I mean, three or four people showed up, but they weren't even subscribers. And, you know, a couple of people made comments later, but they were late. They missed it. Blah, blah, I downloaded blah. it. It was gotcha. a very, I downloaded it. It was a, it was a very good uh, presentation. Oh, thank you. Uh, it is uh, this, it is the exact same thing. I would say that um, you're being cheated. You know, uh, people like us, we feel for you. We don't want people to be unhappy in this world. You're being cheated and you don't have the proper context. And so you don't have the right meaning. And so you can't gauge the teachers. Boy, you got it, man. You nailed it. Simple. I, I wish I, wish and, I had a uh, hundred friends like you. <laughs> And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you and I, we feel bad for you, meaning the, the seeker. We feel bad for you. We do. We, we don't want anybody. Yeah, genuinely. We want to help, but, uh, but you're being cheated. Yeah. And it's your own fault because you won't do the work to clarify the meanings of the teachings. Sorry, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. but that's really the way it is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even when I spell it out so explicitly, like I did in that presentation, still, the people aren't getting it. And I think it's a fundamental limitation of their intelligence caused by social conditioning, schooling, like that. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's really bad. It's a uh, um, spiritual bad programming, and then even material bad programming. Um, yeah, I think they're deliberately trying to create a society of idiots. Yes, uh, they they certainly are. Uh, they've yeah. done a good job. And uh, also, there's an expression. It says, um, "When the student is ready, the teacher will appear." Uh -huh. It's a it's a popular. Uh, it's a great phase, but notice uh, it's predicated first on the student. So the student has to be desperate enough to want to know the truth, and then the teacher appears. Yeah, uh, desperate enough to make the commitment and and to do the mm -hmm. work, to take the risks involved in approaching a teacher, because it's risky. What if the teacher is a bad actor? A yeah, Yeah, you have to... You have to make yourself vulnerable, which we're already programmed to never do. You know, you, you can't be vulnerable. 
uh, program not to be able to do that while well, you have to be vulnerable. And then, of course, you can't uh, approach the uh, another teacher that's going to cheat you. Well, and everybody has been are destroyed cheated. anyways. Everybody's been cheated. Yeah, that's why. That's why their conference is destroyed. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shame, you know, it's a real shame. I was trying to explain to another friend last night or early this morning that, you know, these teachers keep the outward resemblance of the teaching and even use the same words, but they give the words different meanings than in the original. Yeah. And yeah, so and people I mean, we just had a discussion. People mistake we, we the just form had for the content. For the content, sorry. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and we just had our uh, personal discussion about how we, we both ended up translating stuff from different languages like the Bible from Greek, and we independently yeah. both that was a ended fascinating up doing discussion. that because of because of how egregious these these translations are. We suspected we were being cheated. And so we went to the original source and found out, tried to verify it, and it failed. Right. Yeah, the, the like the checksum failed. That's why blockchain, everything's every block is checksummed. Huh. Every single one. Yeah, so you can't cheat. Data integrity. Yeah. Yeah, you can't cheat blockchain. That's the whole point. And what's so fun and why I love investing is you still, most people still don't get it. They're like, well, yeah, but you know, they're they're going to fudge that up. They just don't understand. It's it's a checksum. You can't do that. <laughs> the vast majority of the public, they, they, they don't get it. It'll take a while until they finally get it. But I'm sure there's way to, ways to game it around the edges. You know, the edge cases. But anyway, in spiritual mm -hmm. life, there's, there's no way, you know, because the sources are all ancient and in dead languages that nobody speaks anymore and uh -huh. are about a very esoteric subject matter that very few people really understand. And so for the average person to go back and verify and validate a teaching is, is very difficult. Practically speaking, the only way is to try it and see if it works. But that takes a lot of time yeah. and effort, and it's a big risk. So before I deviated, you were talking about how they change like one word um, to suit their agenda. I suppose uh, yes. their agenda is predicated upon the, the level of their advancement. Their motives will be predicated upon the level of their advancement. Yeah. You know, uh, dif different levels of self-realization. There are. Uh, we've, many, many. We have, we have a history. Yeah, we have a history of talking about this in the past, in our history. We've, uh, we've spoken about this for years. Yeah. And the level of advancement will will end up affecting how they teach and what their motives are. Right. They can't help it because that's the level yeah. of their yeah. being. Hey, would you do me a favor? Would you tell you want, talk, you want me to set this down? No, talk a little bit about how we met. Okay, it's so a very um, interesting I, story. If you don't mind, you can skip over the sensitive parts if you want, but just generally, how we met. Um, I was dangerously atheistic um, at the time. Uh, I wasn't an aspiring yogi, you could say. I, I understood non non duality because I realized that the the notion of being the observer has to be blown out. How to gauge if someone understands what a yogi is, the, the identification of the observer has to be blown out completely. That is still ego. And so I actually understood this. 
but I I was never introduced to proper Vedic culture or, or, or Vaishnav understanding. You were running a forum. I came onto your forum and was acting like an idiot, but you're like, oh, it's okay. He's from New York, so it's okay. It checks out. <laughs> He's from New York. And, um, and uh, I was defending A Course in Miracles, uh, uh, and which I still do. I think it's a great book for very fallen people uh, because very, very fallen people who are extremely disturbed, they cannot even, um, even, even conceive that there could be a, a higher power or, or, or faith or, or something like this. So a book like that can help those people, uh, very, very disturbed people. Uh, so mm-hmm. I, I'd always defend that. Uh, but um, basically, uh, I was introduced to a proper interpretation of the Vedas through that forum that you were running. Mm. That was how we met originally. Yeah. Right? So it's, again, and, a matter of so, content and context. You came in contact with an authentic context, and it put everything in perspective. Yeah, I mean, it's literally night and day. It's binary. Um, it is completely dependent on the proper presentation. Oh. And I got the proper presentation, and it took it took hours. I mean, literally, it was like a, a constant rewiring uh, as, as I was wrapping my head around it. And I, and I went, wow. And um, I think you could tell right away that I got it. Oh yeah, and uh, I was on board. That was I was really impressed with how quickly you understood. I came right back the next day, and I was totally on board. Now, of course, I still had to now go through a long process in in the Vedas, known as Purusharthas, which are these four um, four goals of human life, uh, three of which are material. The last one is essentially transcendental. Yeah. Um, Dharma, Artha, Kama, and, and Moksha. Yes. And, and they uh, correlate and, uh, with the four I'm, states of consciousness too. I have a I have a suspicion that the the what you call the chatur darshanams are essentially the moksha platform. That's how I, I'm looking at it. Yeah, and, they're and views. I have a, a total. Co- Yes, yes. And I have total confidence that I'll traverse them um, probably very soon, possibly now, now if I'm changing a lot already. Oh, you yeah, know, you're I have on no your reason way. To doubt it. There's no, there's no need to doubt it. It, uh, uh, it looks, to, looks to be totally accurate. And um, the Moksha platform seems to be like, I sent you a, a message about this just recently. It's, it's hard to to talk you, you don't want to use words because your your job is to just be you which is who you already are <laughs> just your job is to just be what you are so now it's awkward to talk as, as if you're not what you are so words become almost uh, inapplicable or or you know maybe not apropos to try to describe it like you could not be enlightened or you could not be you or something to that effect. You know what right. I mean? Right. That's why we greet everybody namaste. You know, even the lowest beggar on the street is still fundamentally an enlightened being. It's just there's some covering. So they can't realize yeah, there's, it. Or, there's or there's no difference. Can't. Even a slug. Even even if even if I'm looking, there's no slug right now. But if there's a slug right there, a living creature, there's no difference. Exactly the same. No difference in essence. In mm-hmm. essence, but in the form, in the covering, in the bodily shape, and so on, and its functions, there's the differences. The difference is in the quality, not in the essence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I, I double checked this. It's a combination of namas and te, but there, I, it, it, I was looking for. I thought it meant 
I worship the God in you, which is also the God in me. But I found That's out it true. actually does mean that. It does. So it was weird. I guess I guessed that and then looked it up and it still confirmed that that's what it what it meant. Yeah. But this is Wikipedia, so who, who knows how authentic uh, oh, it's, trustworthy That's that correct. Is. That's correct. Grammatically. It's correct? No, yeah, namaha means I worship mm-hmm. or I offer my respects. And te means unto you. Uh-huh. Not oh, you, the body, okay. not you, the mind or the ego, but you, the right. essential being. Right. Right. So, so in order to say namaste, you actually have to be intelligent <laughs> to say it properly <laughs> because it's to not, it it's, not a right mundane, it's not a mundane phrase. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You have to already kind of be intelligent to say it properly. I agree. So what do you really want to get off your chest? <laughs> Me? What do you want the people to really know? Yeah. I'm, I'm exhausted with doing the lecture stuff. I could spend the rest of my life going through, you know, Lalita Sahasranamam or the Buddha Suttas or Vedanta Sutra or, you know, any number of scriptures, big major scriptures and giving purports yeah. and this and that. But there's no feedback. I mean, the little comments on YouTube, you know, one or two liners. Some people leave substantial comments, but it's rare. So they're the interchange. Yeah, and, and if the I balance, was doing, if, huh? if no, if if I was doing what you're doing, and I had to read comments like, "Oh, the love and light, you know, I really shines forth from you." That hippie stuff, I would it would drive me crazy. <laughs> I would be able to take it. it does I, drive I would me crazy. Be a computer out the window. It does if, well not to that degree, but. But it, it gets me frustrated that, my God, they're hearing all this stuff for years, some of these people, and they just haven't got it. They're still... Yeah, or they can't differentiate between the cheating teachers and you. It's like, how, how do you not see the difference? Right, right. Yeah. They're, they're, they're being cheated. Like I was um, talking with this friend last night, and he was talking up Papaji and, ba- and uh, Muji. And I'm telling them, look, yeah. they're, they're teaching neo Advaita. See, but to understand the distinction between authentic Advaita and neo Advaita, you have to understand these chakra darshana. Uh-huh. And he doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't. So he, right. he's incapable of making the distinction. And he thinks, oh, Muji, Papaji, yeah, it's all one, you know, it's all good. And and he thinks that I'm being hard-hearted and and cold by not accepting them, but that's not it at all. You know, yeah. um, I guess you know it, it's just like an artist or a musician can sense very subtle differences in tone or color or shade, but a person who's untrained in those arts. To them, it just looks, you know, like a, a wash. <laughs> they don't see. Well, that, these that's why you like that. Well, that's why you like that Buddhist quote. It became one of your favorites about it being a refined quality of consciousness. Ah, that's yes. why I knew you you were going to like that quote. Sure. And one, the being, the, the being falls in tune with a refined quality of consciousness. I okay. love the way the Buddha expresses it. He literally says, fall in tune like with a with an instrument. He, mm-hmm. You know, he implies a metaphor that the human being is like an instrument. And when you have it tuned up properly, when all the chakras are balanced and in their proper uh, order and so on, a refined oh, quality yeah. of being manifests. Interesting. It's a wonderful. Quote. I like an energetic, uh, yeah, like an energetic thing, almost uh, uh, being in tune. Oh, absolutely. By the chakras and stuff. Kundalini yeah. is life energy. She is life itself. That's why she's called the mother. She gives us life. She sustains our life, and at the end, she takes our life 
and then puts it in another form according to our karma. So if we're open, if all the chakras are open and in tune and, and you can get the ego out of the way, she'll arise spontaneously, uh -huh. you know? She's, she wants to unite with Shiva in the Sahasrara. So right. she, will, she will rise as soon as we get out of the way. But to yeah, do that that's means, also what I was. I'm sorry, I could I what? could rap about this all day. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that when I messaged you yesterday, and I was saying that I have to be me, and so I'm at a loss for words. It's inappropriate to talk. Also, at the same time, um, it, it it feels like you're getting out of you're getting out of the way. But suddenly I don't talk and suddenly the mind falls out of the way and just I'm it, it, you're in your natural state. It's very it's a very normal thing. And um, it's like then the, then the lesser advanced people, they want a clear explanation. But then the teacher still being compassionate is going, eh, I can't do that. I have to be myself. I it's inappropriate. Uh, you know, it's weird. It's it's inappropriate to get out of the natural state to start using the mind to then try to uh, use words. Get, get you know why natural. lower yourself? Yeah, uh, it's like I'm sorry, but my job now is to be me. <laughs> so it's the, it's now it com becomes harder to help the very fallen people in a way. Well, I'd like to do that. I I'd like to have a situation where I can be physically present with people and link with their energy to give them a taste, you know? So I don't yeah, have to I think that, explain everything. I, I think that already happened with me and you because uh, I told you about these like transmissions. Yeah. And a lot of stuff is happening recently, so it can't be a coincidence. So in, in your case, it may just be that, oh, you know what it is? It's a, it's a service attitude. Ah, the way I came, I came to you and I was going to talk about that legal stuff. And you were just like, no, not now. And I changed my attitude. I'm like, you know, OK, you be the leader then, because that's fine. And it was just a subtle change. And by talking to you and I'm like, uh, I'll, I'll let this guy lead. And suddenly you have a service attitude. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And and now there's like transmissions that take place. So this is the nature of getting impacted by uh, someone with you know a higher level of consciousness without having to use words. Oh. It's uh, it's a shift into a service attitude. That's that's the that's the best way I can describe it. Like talking Whereas for with the Richard lower levels, the other you night. could use words. Like uh -huh. talking with Richard yeah. the other night, I could feel his energy like he was present in the room. I mean, he's literally on the other side of the planet, you know, mm. but it was, I could feel it was very refreshing because I didn't have to struggle to communicate with him. It just happened automatically. It was a deep understanding underneath each word. And that's also the way it is with you because you listen and I listen. I listen more than I talk, even though I talk a lot. Yeah, but I listened because you told me to a long, a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I learned that I learned that from you. I didn't listen until I met you. <laughs> That's how I learned everything. I heard from my teachers, mm. not just with my ears and my rational mind, but I heard deeper. Mm. It's the only way I can describe it. I could hear, you know, I, my training as a musician allows me to duplicate vibrations. That's really the essential training of a mm -hmm. musician. And because of that, when I hear from someone, I can duplicate their state of being just by hearing them. You know, yeah. I, I guess it's kind of a kind of a mystic power in, in some way. Not really though, because actually anybody could do it if they just open, you know, and allow themselves to be receptive. Yeah. 
yeah. So, so for me, it was it was basically what over the past couple of days, kind of when I said I'd be like, okay, I'll let you be the leader, and then, and then I become a little bit more receptive and and a little bit more in service, and that's that's all it takes. It's like I know you know a lot about that stuff, and I want to hear it from you, but I want to wait until I have room in the head, you know. Right now, I don't sure, because sure. of all this travel stuff. But there will come a time, and I'm looking forward to hearing that from you. But it worked out better because now, uh, <laughs> now I've been kind of transformed over the past couple of days, and it, 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 it's a, not a coincidence that that I've been interacting with you a lot. And and, and like the other day, I was just totally uh, at a loss for words. By the way, just just for the people who are watching, we do a lot of interaction over signal messenger and, uh, you know, audio calls, video calls, text messages and like that. We've had extensive conversations over the last couple of weeks. Signal is pretty cool. I love and, it. Um, oh, yeah. And I and like I was, it. Better and I was going to say, so this is better than Discord. Better than uh, WhatsApp. I know any other messenger that I've ever tried. Signal is my favorite. I think a I, lot it, of it, it has it, to do a, with the security. It's very secure. Yes, it has an effect. It has an effect on you. You feel cool while you're using it. You're like, hey, this this re, this is really end to end right now. It's only us two that are seeing this, and it's Nobody it's got a different knows. feel to to it. It's private. Right. And, yeah, yeah, and the the rest of the internet just doesn't have that feel to it. You get the feel like you're literally being tagged and sold, like those cows that have those those little clips on their ears or or something like that. You know, that's what you feel like when you, know you use it. other stuff on the web. Yeah, I completely so deleted this, this my this. Facebook account. <laughs> yeah. Awful, oh, awful. Uh, I told you that years ago. I yeah. Yeah, uh, well, I, I made it, a joke was, years ago. It was handy for me to stay in touch uh, with my son and granddaughter and, mm. and certain friends. Actually, I met Richard Clark through Facebook. But he's mm. the only one that I kept. He's the only one that I can actually communicate with. So, yeah. When, it, when you get that feeling, that, that feeling, it's like a space, an ethical space that permits intimacy. And you can experiment uh, without being afraid. You know, try different types of communication. Right. So I, I want to be the way shower. I want someone to see the interview and go, hey, uh, hey look, th this is the new format. Um, and uh, Matt had a nice conversation. Maybe I can do that too. Uh, you know, uh, uh, that's kind of the idea, the hope anyways, uh, right? I hope so, because other than you and Richard, really nobody has contacted me um, for one-to-one -one conversation, which I find very strange, you know, because a lot of people will write comments on YouTube. Oh, Guruji, I want to be your disciple. Okay. Call me on, on WhatsApp, or I'm sorry, on Signal. And then nothing happens. I mean, yeah, if bizarre. They, if they can't show up on Signal, which is the safest space that I know online, how are they right. ever going to be a, a, a real disciple? Yeah, I, I don't get it myself. I really don't. Yeah, I don't have the answers to that one. Yeah, it's inexplicable. <laughs> I'm fine with things being inexplicable or unknowable or non-conceptual or transcendent. I'm, I'm fine with that. You know, my mind just has to deal with it. <laughs> Sorry, mind. <laughs> there are so many things. Actually, if you look deep into it, everything is inexplicable. Everything hmm. is a mystery and a miracle. I think I know what you're saying, yeah. If you look deep, yeah? Right. 
Yeah. How do how do we and it's ordinary things too. How do we digest our food? How do we continue to breathe while we're asleep? Where are dreams coming from? You know. Yeah, and also the the comment that I told you that that Brahmana is asking, "Who am I?" because he doesn't know the answer, and that's why you ask questions when you don't know the answer to the question. But people are like, what do you mean? That's, that's, of course, he's enlightened. Of course, he knows. It's like, no, that's not how it works. You don't ask questions when you know the answer. You, you ask can't questions know when the you answer don't to that question. know the answer. Right, exactly. So now we're deep. Now we're in the deep end of the pool. You got your rubber ducky? <laughs> I knew you were going to say something like that. <laughs> well, you have to get... I have my wool, wool coat you have to on. Use, you have to use humor... When things get too heavy, you know, I, I, I'll, sure, a not? lot of these, a lot of these teachers. I like having fun. Yeah, it's good to have fun. It lightens things up. A, a lot of these teachers, you know, they're so serious. Uh, you know, what is that all about? I don't know. But if it's not I don't know. fun, those aren't why the teachers that, that bother me. Those aren't the teachers that bother me. The teachers that bother me are the ones that are um, always smiling and very sarcastic. Uh, I have a side like that because a lot of these teachers show up in my space as idiots or con men or sociopaths. You know, like they they have the same vibe as as, as a startup CEO. You know. The impossible dream. I'm going to sell you on the impossible dream. Yeah. You know, that kind of huckster used car salesman vibe. Trust me. No, I mean, uh, what was I saying? Uh, we were talking about trying to explain the inexplicable and how phony teachers have that kind of sarcastic, oh, wise guy oh. who. Yes, yes, I cannot stand those. It's specifically the opposite of the teachers that are too serious that really irk me. It's the ones that are not serious, the ones that are very uh, sarcastic, and, and they want you to think that it's a, it's a big joke and that everything's funny. Those are the ones that bother me a lot. I can't mm. take it. Mm. I can't think of anybody like that just off the top of my head. I see it all the time. I just look at the thumbnail and I go, oh, oh my God, oh. this is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. yeah, there are some people you can pick it up, pick up the vibe from just from their picture. Yeah, and uh, I could I could uh, double check and click the video to make sure, but I don't need to be up front with that level of toxicity, you know? It's like getting right. next to like some uh, nuclear reactor or something. It's like no thanks. I'll just I've seen I've seen the thumbnail. That's enough. <laughs> I already I already got the uh, the transmission. I don't need to see anymore. And that's what I, people I, are watching. That's scary. I don't listen. They're this getting is views. why I don't listen to other teachers. Somebody asked sure? me, "Well, have you have you ever heard from you know this teacher or that teacher?" And I say, "No," because. Just looking at the picture is enough, you know, that, that I don't want to be in contact with them. Exactly. But it's also, the picture. Yeah. I, I don't want to be contaminated by their ideas. Yeah, that's what I'm doing too. Exactly that. That's exactly right. But then you have to think, wow, people are actually listening to these guys. Let's look at the view count. 89,000. Are you kidding yeah. me? You know, something, something like that. It's like, that's, that's sad. Well, they're speaking to the level of, of understanding that those people have. That's why they get the big audience. Or they have some reputation. They're a the disciple of so-and-so, or you know, they have a, a Hollywood starlet as one of their students, or you know, they got the buzz going somehow. I guess one of the takeaways from our conversation, because there's got to be a takeaway, and the ta one of the takeaways has got to be that uh, we care about you, but you're getting cheated. If you're one of those speaker seekers out there, 
we care about you, but you're getting cheated. You're, uh, yeah. you're watching toxicity and the results are going to be bad. You're not going to get good results. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But it's awfully hard to convince someone who, who is from their point of view, getting a good feeling off these guys. Yeah, I hear you. Interesting. You know? And I, I don't have it in me to argue with people and try to defeat their philosophy and turn them into a follower or, you know, convert them to my way of thinking. I just don't have that mood at all. Prabhupada did. He was mm -hmm. expert. Really? He That's was cool. expert. Oh, boy. He could nail somebody to the wall and then charm them into becoming his follower. I mean, it was really oh. amazing. Oh, cool. <laughs> I saw him do it or, you know, heard him do it hundreds of times. He could turn a, a critic into a follower. It's a great talent. Yeah, he was, he, he was, he was so very good. successful. Oh. And it, he was very, uh, very much about the fact. It wasn't about views with him. It was, it was about facts, and that's what made him so powerful. Yeah. He, he wouldn't argue opinions because, quite frankly, that's stupid. That's not how you debate. He could catch someone in a small little mistake that they're making, but a factual mistake. And he could just, he could just point to that and say, that small thing is not true. <laughs> but it's not arguing. It's a fact. That's the difference. Yeah, and people can't argue against that. Exactly. And it doesn't matter how small it is. He could just find a small itty-bitty one and just go, no, that's not that one, no. I, I, I like that. That's powerful. Yeah, he, he had, what was the way? He had a, a proverb, a Bengali proverb that he used to say, in like a pin, out like a plow. In other words, you come in at one tiny little point, but then uh -huh. boom, uh -huh. you know. You <laughs> nah, that's nice. It's a nice one. Cool. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. But to see, that's a completely different mood from mine, which is that I know you're already enlightened. You're a conscious being. You're a transcendent living entity. You're a a reflection of Brahman in a human body. All you have to do is turn around and look. So it's not up to me to find, try to force you or try to convince you of anything. You know, I'm just going to lay out the, tr the truths that come from the source literatures, the Vedas, Upanishads, mm -hmm. Vedanta, sutras like that. You can take it or leave it. I don't want to be dependent on you or you to be dependent on me. I want to turn you on to the source and plug you in. And then, of course, you can do with that whatever you want. Somebody once commended me on, on a quote that I gave that I said that, that these people, they're not even them. They're being run. They're not captured. Uh -huh of their own ship they're being run so it's not even them you know and he he commended me on that statement he really liked that and this they're is an older person so he yeah they're conditioned and and so it's it's somebody else's agenda that's being run somebody else's software is being run there very good observation because if they would look within and find you know who they are <laughs> who am i that mm -hmm. would all fall away very easily yeah i probably a self inquiry would be enough to collapse that uh it is, paradigm indeed. sure yeah, yeah indeed. it would be enough i agree well so now we've solved all the world's problems <laughs> Yeah, you're welcome, folks. <laughs> <laughs> send send to this uh, Bitcoin, this pirate chain address, your <laughs> funds. 
<laughs> oh boy. Well, I tell you what, like I said, I got up at like 1.30 this morning. Oh, I got woke up by the storm. And it rained so hard that the whole our whole road is flooded. I sent you that little video. I saw it, yeah. Oh my God. I don't know how my cleaning lady got here this morning, but she showed Kayaking. up. Kayaking. Kayaking. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, the cows just plow right through it like it's nothing. But, you know, try that with a scooter. Right. Yeah, or a bicycle. Actually, so, the Teslas are known to wade through water. What, Teslas? Teslas. Yeah, they're good. The electric, they are good for wading through water. Really? Deep water. Yeah. Huh. They're known for that. Interesting. They're so, they're so well sealed. Both huh. the motors and the, um, the battery packs. They and have the, videos even, of it. You know? Even the atmosphere in the car is filtered and everything you know it's very good yeah they they they've done incredible stuff with that too not that it's advisable but but they have been doing that yeah it's pretty cool okay so anyway what i was leading up to is that i think i want to sign off now and right. uh you know start heading toward the the sack <laughs> <laughs> uh, i really enjoyed this and i think we touched on a number of really important points and i hope that everybody listening to this takes it seriously and uh, tries to understand you know how to benefit from these things these understandings so because i'm i'm like running out of gas here I'm like, <laughs> brains too tired i need to eat something and go to bed so i really enjoyed it matt i'm so glad that you wanted to do this chat. Oh, it was, it was my pleasure. And uh, I'm so glad we solved the, uh, that audio problem uh, makes, I, I love knowing. I love, love knowing, I hate, I hate not knowing. So yeah. I'm doubly satisfied is what I'm saying. Chase it down to the nub, right? <laughs> that's, that's how I do it. Find One thing the after calls. the next, rapid fire, yeah. I used to be a, a field engineer for Hewlett Packard, working on their computers, some of the first computers, you know, mini computer size uh, deals. And one time we had an installation up in Las Vegas, and the computer was so big, they had to knock out a wall to install it, huh. and then it wouldn't run. So I went up there. I ran every test in the book. They all were perfect, but the computer just would not run. And we even brought a guy out from the factory, an engineer from the factory, one of the designers. He couldn't find anything wrong either. So after like three or four days knocking our head against the wall, we're in there at like six o'clock at night <laughs> and the janitor comes in. <laughs> Oh, this he old, solves the problem. This old Polish guy, right. Right. <laughs> and he said, you know, this is here a three-phase power, and this used to be a two rooms, uh, and now you've got the one to plug it into one phase and the other one to plug it into other phase. And in those days, the computer clock was run off the AC waveform. Okay. Yeah. So it was just like a frequency multiplier key to the zero crossing of the, of the power supply. So the two cabinets of the computer were like 90 degrees out of phase or 120 degrees out of phase and they're clocks. Uh -huh. And as soon as we got a big extension cord, plugged them both into the same source, boom, it ran flawlessly. The, the, there was too much impedance in the wire. It, you no, and that the, messed up the no, no, no. The 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 current one cabinet was out of phase with the other cabinet because the clock was run off the AC. No, I, I understood. I understood that. I understood oh, okay. That. But why would an extension cord help? 
Oh, because we could plug both the cabinets into the same power source. Oh, they were different power. Oh, oh yeah, now I see what you're saying. One yeah, was yeah, plugged in you. one room, the other was plugged in the other room, which would yeah, have got yeah, yeah, different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the janitor, the janitor <laughs> solved the problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he got promoted too, right? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. This was all, you know, top secret Q clearance stuff working for the AEC back in the days. Okay, so he got fired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. I'm joking. I don't know. Poor guy. But anyway, yeah, that's the way it is, you know. And when you're trying to uh, solve spiritual problems over a, a, a communication link like this, you know, kind of similar things can happen because of mix ups in the meaning of the words and like that. So it's, I mean, really amazing that we can communicate as well as we do. And I think it's because you have duplicated some of the most important contexts that our teaching is is couched in, you know, held in. And because of that, you immediately get the meaning. It's just wonderful to see. Um, I'm glad. I'm I'm very um, I'm touched by that. And we had no um, no objective on this call. Totally on. Plan. Completely spontaneous. And maybe the next right. time we we maybe next time we will have a subject matter or not or you know whatever whatever is best. I'm willing to just let it roll. I'm an old jazz hey, musician, are. you know, free jazz, man. Any key, any time. <laughs> whatever, because it's all part of the context of the esoteric teaching. It all fits somewhere. And if you know the context, you can instantly see where it fits. So there's nothing off limits. Everything's game. Okay, Matt. Thank you all very right. much. Thank you. All tatsa.